Uh, yeah. So I'm Zachary Hofek. I'm a software engineer at Google working with Dataflow templates. Uh, Oleg is also a software engineer at Google working with Dataflow templates. Is there anything else you want to say, Oleg? Uh, probably no. Yeah, uh, same team <laughs> working okay. on uh, Dataflow templates. Yeah. So some of you might already be familiar with Dataflow and Dataflow templates, uh, but just for the people who aren't familiar, we're going to be giving a very brief overview of both of them. Uh, Oleg? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Dataflow is a unified stream and uh, batch data processing service uh, that can execute uh, uh, Apache BIM pipelines. And the uh, Dataflow is uh, fully managed and serverless. It allows auto scaling of uh, resources and uh, dynamic work rebalancing. It helps with minimizing pipeline latencies. Uh, maximizes uh, resources utilization and reduces processing cost uh, per uh, data record. And uh, Apache Beam already provides the data flow runner that can upload the executable uh, code and its dependencies uh, to Google Cloud Storage and uh, creates uh, the data, data flow job. Um, which executes the provided pipeline and uh, it manages all the uh, resources in the Google Cloud platform. Um, yeah, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so the data flow templates is a service uh, for staging your pipelines in Google uh, Cloud and uh, uh, you can run them after that with Google Cloud Console, Google Cloud uh, Command Line Interface, and uh, REST API calls. Uh, pipelines are, that are created as templates, they always use that uh, data flow runner. And uh, there are many Google provided templates, uh, so you can use them as is or uh, create your own, you can use those provided templates as a starting point or make, uh, make yours from scratch. Um, the good amount of those uh, provided templates, they have like the format of transferring the data between different uh, storage types, kind of like all kinds of databases, uh, file storage systems and uh, streaming services um, like Kafka, pops up. Um, yeah, so you can go to the next slide. Yeah, and one of the questions that often comes up when people learn about Dataflow templates is, why should I care about templates? So there's a couple of ways that we can approach this. The first is, why would you want to stage a Dataflow pipeline? So the first is that it allows for very easy reuse in this case, the pipeline is already, everything you need to run the pipeline is already located in Google Cloud. And we can very easily just pull it, either the graph that's been pre-serialized or a Docker image and run it on a VM. And it will serialize the graph there. And once you develop it, you upload it, pretty much anyone who has access can grab it and run it themselves. And there can be basically an arbitrary level of complexity uh, as far as data flow is concerned. There's also more flexibility in how your jobs are created. So Oleg mentioned earlier that you have, that you can use the Google Cloud Console, the uh, G Cloud command, or even a REST API. And so some people may want to have, say, a cloud function that receives its own REST calls or pub sub events and use that to construct the, basically the request to run a data flow pipeline and they can go straight through a REST API, which is a lot harder to do if you're going directly through uh, G Cloud, through Apache Beam. And this added flexibility and reusability is already powering some other Google Cloud products like Dataflex, DataStream, and Spanner. We'll be going into a couple of those a bit more later. 
There's also the angle of why would I care as a Beam user? So Dataflow is, as was mentioned earlier, the native way of running Apache Beam pipelines in Google Cloud. And Dataflow templates are just built on top of that. So if you already are writing Apache Beam pipelines, you can convert them into a Dataflow template, stage them, and run them. Run them. And again, it helps you make them more easily reusable and more easily triggered. Google also, as mentioned already, provides a lot of open source templates. This means that there's a lot of open source examples of how you can write and test your Apache Beam pipelines. And it can even serve as a starting point for your own pipelines. And here's the URL, just the GitHub URL. It's Google Cloud Platform slash Datapo templates. Now, most of this presentation from here on out is going to be focused on these open source templates, specifically the ones that have been developed over the last year, approximately from like May of 2021 till now in May of 2022. Uh, Oleg? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, one of the theme of those templates or, or series of the templates is like elastic search, basically all of them um, allow ingestion of, uh, of the data from Google Cloud to Elasticsearch um, and uh, basically kind of divided by this uh, storage type. And yeah, two of them are batch uh, pipelines. It's uh, first one is uh, from cloud storage to Elasticsearch. It allows transferring the data uh, from one or more, or more CSV files uh, in the cloud storage to Elasticsearch. And, uh, during this transfer, the CSV row is converted to JSON object, and then that object is ingested to Cloud Search as a document. And uh, similarly, there is a template to do uh, basically the same from BigQuery. Uh, in this case, uh, though the row is being transformed to JSON object, and again, it's being ingested as as a doc document to Elasticsearch. Uh, the pumps up to Elasticsearch is a little bit different. Um, it's the uh, streaming streaming job that uh, uh, reads the uh, JSON um, messages from the pumps up. Uh, this template also allows application of JavaScript user-defined functions if they are provided to uh, adjust the messages or basically change them in any way user wants. And uh, again, after that, I just uh, pass this into Elasticsearch. All right, yeah, we can go to next one. Yep. And the uh, next series of uh, templates are for transferring the data between the PubSub service and uh, uh, any SQL databases that support GDPC connections. Uh, one of the first templates is a, a batch. It uh, transfers the existing data from the database into PubSub. Uh, basically, user provides a database and a query and uh, various options to, on how to connect to the database. And um, uh, the other one, other template, uh, it's kind of other way. It's a streaming one uh, from pops up to uh, uh, database. It reads the uh, JSON messages uh, from pops up. It's also just uh, use the users provided insert SQL statement. And again, uh, the way to connect to the database to basically transfer those messages. In this case, um, the fields in the JSON messages needs to match the uh, columns in the tables of the database. And uh, yeah, next uh, slide is good. Uh, next is a series of, again, series of templates and uh, therefore running the internal uh, tasks of the 
uh, new Google Cloud service called Dataplex. And uh, uh, the Dataplex is intelligent data fabric that help users unify distributed data and automate data management and governance um, to power analytics at scale. Um, and uh, Dataplex organizes uh, the data that can be stored in different underlying storage systems like uh, Google Cloud Storage and BigQuery. And uh, internally, some of the tasks of the Dataplex are implemented um, as uh, data flow templates, uh, templates that use Apache Beam. Since, and some of those tasks are ingesting uh, uh, data into Dataplex from existing databases. Again, we just need to support GDBC uh, connectivity. Um, and then the other task is converting file formats. It's um, if the underlying storage is uh, a cloud storage, you can uh, move the, those files from one Dataplex asset into another one. And also during that can convert the file format. So for example, from JSON to ARCID or Avro. Uh, and uh, the last one is also transferring the data between two different underlying storage systems of uh, BigQuery and the uh, cloud storage. Um, so it's again moves the data between different assets of Dataplex and also kind of from one storage system into another. All those uh, templates, they heavily use Apache Beams, IO classes like GDBC IO, BigQuery IO, uh, File IO, and uh, utilize their many, many of those uh, features of those classes. And yeah, I think next we should have demo of one of the Dataplex templates. So I'll try to share my window now. Yeah, I'll stop uh, presenting and give uh -huh. you a chance to share. Uh -huh. So it tells me I'm sharing the screen. <laughs> Let me know if you don't see my screen. <laughs> but basically here I have a Dataplex, uh, this new service and uh, it uh, organizes uh, data into lakes. So I created my test lake here. Then the lakes have zones. I made a zone uh, in my lake. And then inside the zones, we have assets. So I have two simple assets, one and two. And uh, I basically, inside of those assets, uh, they just uh, represent, uh, store the data in the cloud storage uh, with corresponding buckets. Uh, so here for uh, my asset one, I have a, a bucket and inside of the asset, I have to here two entities uh, with two simple CSV files, um, APC and transaction. And um, with that, we can uh, uh, try and uh, move uh, that data from one asset to another one. So we'll move it to, uh, to basically an underlying storage to the second bucket and uh, second asset into this one. Uh, so for that, we can go to processes and I can create a new task. So here one of them is convert to curated file formats, which actually runs the data flow template. And here I choose a few parameters like names, my lake. Um, and uh, one long parameter, I'll put my asset name here. And then just the output one, which is two. 
Oops. Oops. The wrong place. <laughs> it goes here. And uh, for file format, I'll use Avro. And I think we are ready. Uh, one interesting uh, parameter here is uh, we can specify what to do if the files are already exist. Often those jobs are scheduled, and so some files might be uh, kind of like uh, there could be different time, types of assets where files accumulate or files being overwritten. So we can specify if we want to uh, add to existing files or overwrite them. Uh, that's, and there are other optional parameters there. And uh, we'll create a job. Um, so that job will be scheduled. And if we want, we can run it right away. So we can say run, run the pipeline. And so it will be running, but to save some time, I can uh, show kind of how it, how the result looks uh, when it completes. Uh, basically here in this uh, data flow UI, we can see the graph that was built for this job. It kind of, uh, for each uh, file, it detected that and it, uh, basically provided the graph where we read the file first, convert it uh, to our generic record in both cases. And then we simply output them to the, uh, to the second asset. Um, yeah, in, the, in this case, everything succeeded. Kind of like on the right hand side, we can um, examine the uh, parameters that we use to run the job. And um, yeah, and basically the Avro files, they show up in the asset too. Uh, all the kind of entities, basically um, entities in, in the um, dataplex world. In this case, it just take the folders in the storage system are preserved and the files now are Avro and then the uh, second, second entity is also Avro. Um, so yeah, that should be good. And for my presentation, so I'll stop sharing my screen. Yeah, and I think we are about at the halfway point. Uh, I think you said you want us to take a break here for Q&A. Yes, thank you. So um, let's see, we have some questions. I mean, I suppose that's clear by now, but just for clarification, everything that we're seeing right now only applies to data flow or are there any parts that are runner independent or that can be reused in other runners? Um, it's, yeah, all well, the, kind of like all the demo is applies to data flow underneath. And if you look at the source code of those templates, you will just see Apache Beam code. Okay. Uh, kind of so, heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So templates are usable in the different runners. Right now we're demoing them in data flow, but it's. Uh, like... No, they're only available for data flow. Okay. Okay. So templates are only available for data flow. The code underneath is is uh, Beam code, uh, yeah. but if you want to use them as templates, that's only uh, it's a feature of data flow. Yeah, it's only the data flow runner supports. Okay, that. awesome. Um, we have another question from Karthik Gomber. Consider we have some event data coming via PubSub. Should we make a JDBC connection for each event coming in the queue? Mm -hmm. um, I think um, it's possible to use the connection pools. Okay. I believe uh, I saw like tutorial how to uh, do that. Uh, yeah, it's it's not it's always not... necessary. Oh, oh, oh. It, and, and even like uh, recently, I looked at uh, just HTTP connections, and uh, also there there was like concluded it's not like necessary to um, 
to have basically one create each new connection for each uh, message in PubSub. Um, you can have, so there might be multiple workers, basically completely separate GDMs. Uh, so you can't have one connection full uh, shared between all the uh, workers, basically between different GVMs, but uh, within one GVM, it uh, should be fine to use the connection pool and share the connections, at least per worker. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Fernando Garcia saying, probably he missed something, but just to double check, the data flow job was created directly from Dataplex with all the configurations that Oleg set up? Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's possible to do it both ways. It's, yeah, you can start it from Dataplex UI or you can start it as a, a separate, um, separate job from data flow UI or from data flow command line interface. And the Dataplex UI kind of like the form you saw for inputting all the parameters that actually uh, generated kind of by us by data flow. Uh, so there's like automated way to uh, generate UI based on the uh, data flow um, uh, template parameters. Um, so you, can, you don't need to build that UI yourself. So I don't exactly know how on uh, HTML and JavaScript it's implemented, but I assume at some point uh, Dataplex JavaScript UI just says insert here the generated form uh, from the data flow and uh, there I put all my, my parameters there. Yeah, if I would be um, doing it from uh, just completely data flow side without going to Dataplex, it would look similar. You would kind of just see that uh, form taking more space on the screen. Uh, there would no, be no any uh, Dataplex menus around and things like that. I also just want to add that we don't expose Dataplex templates directly in the Dataflow UI. You would have to go to the custom template and then point to the image in Google Cloud Storage. So Dataplex UI is by far the easiest way to launch Dataflow templates that are powering Dataplex. Okay, awesome. Um, and just like a question, I mean, by Barza, who asks us if, if we could say that Dataplex is a no-code pipeline tool or what else does it does for us? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like the part of data flow is just uh, kind of like uh, one uh, aspect of it for transferring the data between the assets. But yeah, you can use Dataplex and uh, don't might not need to use any of this um, uh, them pipelines and templates provided by Dataflow. You can just organize your uh, data into lakes. Um, it's kind of, for example, one use case might, might be you have a, a database um, that stores some records like BigQuery, and then maybe you have some large unstructured uh, data in files in the cloud file storage system. And Dataplex would allow you to kind of merge those two resources and present them as one uh, kind of like the data entity that would be governed by the same kind of like the security policies. So you can, uh, you don't have to go into those separate underlying storage system and set up it there separately by yourself. Um, Do we have um, a, a suggestion, a feedback from Dan Young, who I suppose already uses some of this. And he's saying that uh, one nice addition uh, he would suggest to the pub sub to BigQuery, uh, Google provided template, would be to allow for specifying the ignore unknown values. Uh, because currently we they make this change in the provided code and have to recompile. But it would be nice to have that as an option or, or command line argument in case you can do something about it. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, well, I'll try to make that a task and get someone on it. Awesome. And about those who ask about Dataplex, Dataplex is already GA, right? It's available uh, for anybody. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, it's available. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any Dataplex session in, in, in BIM College, but let me see if we can add some or if one of the of upcoming meetup sessions for, for BIM, uh, we can do a, a, a meetup session uh, around Dataplex. I'll, I'll see about that. Um, and just another quick question from Fernando about Dataplex. Do you know if it can also orchestrate similar to Airflow or, or not? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there you can also, um, besides our free tasks uh, that we implemented in uh, uh, kind of like provided ones, you can implement your own templates and. Uh, you can run it from Dataflow or from Dataplex. I haven't uh, tried that. And yeah, it has uh, some scheduling uh, and you can, for example, uh, schedule uh, that uh, my file format conversion task or kind of like transferring the data between assets that can run kind of like at midnight every day, let's say. Um, so it, it, it probably doesn't have all the features of like Airflow, but it has some yeah, scheduling features and um, those uh, templates, for example, the BigQuery to uh, cloud storage and file conversion formats, they kind of like have that little bit in mind that uh, tasks can be periodic and they support what to do with kind of existing files, override them or to don't touch them or like fail if you encounter that awesome. uh, so a little bit of this is possible there yeah okay well i think that covers questions we have until now so we'll let you continue with the second part thank you for this break thank you okay yeah and i'll be taking over from here uh, so Dataplex was mentioned earlier as one of the services that Google Cloud Dataflow templates is powering. Another one that was mentioned earlier is DataStream. And DataStream is a way of taking all of the changes in like a MySQL or Oracle database. So all of your creations, your updates, your deletions, and then transferring them to another location. And as part of this, streaming of these changes to another location, it does use Dataflow templates under the hood. And some of those locations are like BigQuery, uh, SQL through a JDBC connector, Mongo, and Spanner. And just to try to cover some of the features that might be interesting to people who maybe want to look at this code, get ideas of what they can do in their own Apache Beam pipelines, uh, DataStream does have its own IO which supports multiple, has multiple features. First of all, it can be in batch and streaming mode from GCS. It can also do a streaming mode using PubSub, which has a file event that allows it to know where to look in uh, Google Cloud Storage. Sorry for the acronym, if anyone's not familiar with that. Uh, GCS stands for Google Cloud Storage. And it allows it to know where to look up and pull that data as well. It does have some error handling uh, capabilities uh, in its BigQuery and Spanner. Basically, if something were to go wrong at any time within the pipeline, it can send the error over to Google Cloud Storage. And you'll be able to look at it, investigate the record, and see what exactly went wrong. There's also a feature in Beam called Stateful Processing, which is you know, not necessarily like group by key or not necessarily like map, it's its own little thing. And this is used specifically for filtering and also trying to order. So as mentioned, you have a bunch of changes coming in from another database. Some of these may be creations and updates, and you don't want to try to update a record that maybe hasn't update a record 
like do the update command for a record whose creation change still hasn't made it through the pipeline yet. So this ordering is very important to make sure that the end result to JDBC is actually valid. And that's another thing you can look up. There's a lot more available on GitHub. I didn't really want to turn this into a potential data stream, though it seems like a lot of people are interested in things like Dataplex and data stream. Uh, but a lot more of that is in GitHub. If you go to the GitHub, you're going to also see a Postgres uh, template that wasn't mentioned in the previous slide. That one's been effectively replaced by the JDBC template. OK, moving on to another template. This is for streaming PubSub messages to BigQuery. And specifically, these PubSub messages are proto-encoded. So we have templates for like PubSub to BigQuery, which is just regular records. We can also use Avro-encoded messages from PubSub and ingest them into BigQuery. This is specifically for those that have uh, been encoded using Proto. So as you can probably guess, we don't know what the type of these Proto messages are to begin with. So this particular template is written to use what's called a dynamic message in Proto. And it can determine the type based on a provided schema and work with that type through kind of reflection-based. Uh, this template can also be used to modify the input. So we mentioned this uh, briefly earlier, but some of our templates can use a JavaScript UDF for very simple transformations. There are some limitations to this, but obviously with a template, you're not writing the entire pipeline yourself. And you might want some very simple transformations, like you may want to remove a particular column. You may want to just drop a record if you don't want it going to the database. And you can do stuff like that by providing a JavaScript function that we then apply to every single datum that comes through the pipeline. This also does some error handling through uh, invalid messages. These could be maybe you have a message that comes on to your pub subtopic that doesn't comply with the proto schema and it causes a parsing error. Maybe there's a failure within the JavaScript UDF. Maybe there's a failure in trying to write to BigQuery. In all of these cases, they can be written to another pub subtopic. And also, you can specify multiple dead letter topics depending on the context. Or at least you can for the JavaScript EDF and the write to BigQuery. I believe the parsing errors from Proto also go to the same output topic from as the BigQuery one. This also allows you to basically infer a BigQuery schema from your Proto schema. You don't have to provide the BigQuery schema. If, say, your table doesn't exist before this pipeline starts up, uh, like normally you would have to provide a schema. And I think for our PubSub Avro to BigQuery, you do have to provide the schema. But in this case, we'll go through our understanding of the pubs of the Proto schema and convert that into something that BigQuery can understand. And you can also optionally specify to try to preserve the original Proto field name. So Proto, when it's starting to go, trying to convert itself from Proto to JSON, which is more natural for BigQuery, it will also change the name of the fields to be more in line with what you would generally see from a lot of JSON schemas. Uh, in this case, it will keep it more in line with what you would see from, it would keep it exactly whatever you specified within your Proto. So if you're using like, say, snake case, it will preserve that rather than trying to convert it into camel case. And for this one, we also wanted to do a demo. So let me try to change over. There we go. We're seeing uh... The browser, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're seeing so from this web platform, yeah. Okay, that's good. So Oleg kind of showed you how you can launch a data flow job through Dataplex, which is more in line with working with the data that you're storing within a Dataplex lake. 
another way that you can do it is to just go to the data flow UI and you'll have this. Um, can every is this visible or should I zoom in? No one's commenting. It's a bit small. Could you raise the could you increase the size a bit? Yeah, that looks much better. But okay, thank not you. Not so much. You can reduce it one a bit if you want so that we can okay. fit more information. Yeah, that's yeah. enough. Thank you. Okay, so you'll have this create job from template button and you can click on it and come here. So you'll be able to provide your job name. I'm not going to be launching this particular job. I have some other stuff set up that I'll show later. You can specify your region. I believe right now every data flow region is currently supported in templates. And you'll also have the list of all of the data flow jobs that you want to launch. You can also provide a custom template that points to your own uh, file stored in Google Cloud Storage, which specifies either a pre-serialized graph or a basically metadata for a Docker image that exists somewhere. But for now, let me just type it in. We're going to do the PubSub Proto to BigQuery. And so let me switch over to another one. In this case, I've already kind of filled all of this out. In this case, we have our Google Cloud Storage path pointing to the descriptor file. I'll show you a bit one way that you can generate this shortly. We provide the full message name of our song of our um, proto message. It will include both the package and the message name. You can also have nested messages. We have our uh, pub sub subscription that will be reading the data. Our output pub sub topic. This is what's in case any of those errors that I mentioned earlier. You'll the, all those errors would get sent to this topic, and you would be able to look at them later. And then you'll have your output table. This does not need to exist before you start the pipeline. It can exist. It just doesn't. Ha it doesn't have to. And here are some of the optional parameters you have. You can preserve your proto field names. You can provide the uh, schema for a BigQuery if you want to. It's again not required. Uh, and then there's also a lot of other like normal options that you can provide to pretty much any data flow job. One of them is you can provide your own service account email. And if I go down and hit run job, you'll see that it's trying to analyze the graph. I'm going to be moving forward before this is done because this can take a few minutes, not just to serialize the graph, but to get the data flow job started. So this particular template is something that we call a flex template. It's stored as a Docker image. Right now, it's pulling that into a VM. It's going to be executing the code just like it would, just like executing any code for any Apache Beam pipeline. And then I'll eventually upload the graph here. There's another thing that we have called classic templates. And some of the templates you launch are still going to be those. And in that case, the graph would appear here very quickly because the graph's already been pre-serialized, but there's a lot of limitations to that. Uh, one advantage of this approach, for instance, is that we can change the graph depending on the options that you provide. So like the JavaScript UDF that was mentioned earlier, if you do provide it, you'll notice that on the graph. Uh, when this graph eventually serializes, it's not going to be there because I didn't provide the option. But I, ha I already have an example of what the job I launched previously is going to look like. You relatively simple, don't have that JavaScript PDF as I mentioned earlier. But right here, uh, let me try to find, you'll have your output table spec, which is my project, the data set, and then the name of it. And this is called LFC songs presentation. And if I go to my data set, you'll notice that it's not there yet. So I'm going to actually have to be publishing the data. Let me zoom in on this as well. And so first of all, I've defined my proto that I mentioned earlier here, which is just the song. And if it isn't obvious already, this is 
trying to simulate a particularly stingy day at Anfield. So sorry if you're not a Liverpool fan. And for the uh, descriptor file that I mentioned earlier, if you go to your, you can actually specify it in Gradle using this generate proto task from protobuf and we can specify the output somewhere and then just upload that to Google Cloud Storage. But now I am going to try to actually publish data to the pub sub topic. Uh, hopefully my authentication token is still valid. Just taking a little bit. Okay, so we had about a thousand messages sent to PubSub and we should start seeing some sign of activity here before long. Hopefully I sent it to the right location. Yes, so now we have signs of data making it through the pipeline. And if we come here, I'll have to refresh the page. You'll see that this table now exists. There's, it has all of the fields in here. And if I run a query, well, now see data coming in that conforms to that particular proto schema that I showed earlier. Okay. So let me switch back over to just the, uh, actually, I think I might've closed the presentation. I'm sorry about that. No worries. Oh, yeah, we see the slides again now. Okay. So another thing that I wanted to go over is how, you know, this is Beam College. Like, you know, maybe we, you know, maybe you want to know how we sometimes contribute back to Apache Beam. And this particular template did require some contributions back to Apache Beam to make it more useful, but also bring some of the features to all Beam users. So the first one was expanding PubSub IO's proto support. It already supported cases in which you knew the message type at compile time, which we can't do for a template. And so now we do support what I mentioned earlier, this dynamic message in which you, it's based more on a schema rather than on a pre-compiled class. We also had to expand on PubSub IO error handling because as I was adding uh, support for dynamic message, a question came up about what happens if this doesn't parse correctly. And PubSub IO did not support error handling if it didn't parse correctly. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this would be handled by Spark and Flink, but for Dataflow, it can be very bad because Dataflow will try to hold on to the PubSub message and keep retrying it very quickly rather than going back to PubSub. And so it is possible that a message could cause the entire pipeline to get stuck if you don't properly set up your error handling. This could affect both Avro and protoparsing. And as mentioned, it could permanently stall the pipeline. And it was a very serious issue that frequently came up for a bit of time uh, with other templates, especially the PubSub Avro to BigQuery. But now PubSub IO does support sending it to a dead letter topic. You can provide this when you're creating your PubSub IO. And there are some other improvements. Uh, the first one is we wanted to make sure that we could capture more data in from the exception that gets thrown than what was previously provided. But throwables don't override Java's equals method. And therefore, it can create very spammy logs because it thinks that the coder is creating an unequal output. 
And so we created a wrapper around throwable that gets around this issue. Also, the PubSub test client previously only supported doing a pull or a publish within a test. Now it can support both. So there's a lot more flexibility in how you can do tests with PubSub IO if anyone wants to make their own contributions to the PubSub IO in Apache Beam. OK, moving on from the PubSub Proto template, there are some templates that are unreleased. You'll see them in the uh, repository. Um, a couple that we knew of at the time of making this presentation were a BigQuery to Bigtable one. And as a, another product that we em empower in Google Cloud is Spanner. And they're currently doing work with change streams to GCS and BigQuery. There might be more that have started development. In fact, I'm aware of at least one that started, that's like currently starting development. I don't know if any code has been pushed yet, uh, but these were just the ones that we were aware of at the time of making this presentation. Okay, and that's really everything that we've done. All of the templates that we've added within 2021 to 2022, there's been more work on data flow templates beyond that, but that's the Apache Beam side of the work that we've done. Uh, so we just wanna look ahead. Um, specifically, I mentioned earlier that we have a GitHub repository and all of these are open source and you can look at them. Um, but our main focus right now is trying to put ourselves in a position where we can be better engaged on this GitHub repository. And just to be clear, this is the Google Cloud Platform slash Dataflow Templates repository. This is not the Apache Beam repository. Uh, a lot of the stuff I'm going to say here has no application to the Beam repository. It's just for the Dataflow Templates repository. So what is the current state of the data flow templates repository? Um, specifically, those of us who are, are internal, use, internal developers of data flow templates, we've traditionally worked internally and then synced it externally. And then external contributors are going through a separate process where they have to go through the repo and then it's synced internally, which includes going through a bunch of internal checks that these external contributors don't have access to. And that's a serious problem because a lot of times their PRs might fail and they had no way of telling that it even would fail. And furthermore, the separation has created a problem in which us, the templates team, aren't engaged enough in our own GitHub repository. So first of all, our goal is to try to move most of our work from being internal to being external and working on the Dataflow templates uh, GitHub repository. And that means especially responding faster to issues and PRs rather than letting them sick for days or even weeks. And as we do this, we're naturally going to be making the process a lot easier on external contributors because now we're basically eating our own dog food. Uh, it's, we want to make sure that we have better documentation on how to develop and test these templates. We're also trying to move a lot of our integration tests, which are the big issue that can surprise a person when they're making contributions to the repo right now. We're trying to make those open source so you can contribute those as well and make changes if necessary. Uh, in general, we just want better checks on the PRs right from GitHub rather than waiting to run them internally. And a lot of those are already set up. And in theory, we can be doing a lot more work from the GitHub repository today than we could even a few months ago. But despite the kind of bleak but hopeful picture that I painted, uh, there have been people that have made contributions and I just wanted to try to capture as many of them here. This is from our Git log. Um, these are people who've gone through GitHub to make contributions and just wanted to show appreciation for them and any of the troubles they may have experienced over the last year before we started actually doing work to try to make external contributions easier on people going through that process. And I am very sorry if I missed anyone. I, um, again, I pulled this from the Git log. Hopefully no one was missed. And that concludes everything. So thank you. And again, thank you to all the contributors that were mentioned in the previous slide and anyone who I may have unintentionally missed.
Oh, 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 oh,